Hey, what's going on? Welcome. And we're going to talk about the most powerful prompts that I have found, things that I use. Let me know in the chat if you could hear me. I see Vasi is on from Athens, Greece. Good to see you, buddy. And yeah, we'll get into it today. Quick little couple pieces of housekeeping. Number one, we do have a sponsor for today, and that is Otis Global. I will hop over to their site and show you some stuff in a little bit here. And basically, they have premium age domains over there. So we're going to check out some of those. And I am curious, let me know in the chat uh, if there are any prompts that you really like to use, things that you find super helpful or things that maybe haven't been working that well for you and you, you want to investigate a little further. I know a lot of times, especially, you know, the content that we cover on my channel here, it's uh, often highly, highly driven by like just getting content written, which I've said it before and I'll, I'll mention it here again in case you missed it. But I think just having content written by ChatGPT or Bard or whatever, you end up with, um, I don't know, it's, it's not very interesting to me. And I think it depends on what you're writing. Often when I'm trying to write something, not trying, when I am writing something, I, I hope that I'm pulling together you know, my own ideas, but also, I mean, we, we get ideas from other places and hopefully I'm drawing together some ideas that maybe it hasn't been done before. Maybe chat GPT or Bard has no idea about it. So a quick example of what that might be is I might read a book, I might watch a YouTube video. I might listen to a couple podcasts. Maybe I'll listen to an interview or two of uh, an author. So maybe there's five pieces of information, five pieces of data, which, you know, some of those are not on the internet. They're not going to be in the database or in the data set of an AI uh, tool in general, whether it's ChatGPT or BARD or let's say Google you know, they have everything indexed, right? They have the whole internet index. Let's say they have all this data. They may not have the things that I just described because it's very new information. It might be a podcast that just came out in the last couple of weeks. So it might not be indexed even on Google, right? It could be. But when you look at ChatGPT, you know, the data set is from, I can't remember, it's like the end of 2021, something like that. Maybe there was a little bit of a refresh, but basically it's not real-time information. So that said, often when I write, it's pulling together things that are that are new, things that are not going to be indexed, and maybe they're not tied together. So I think the tools are getting better, so you can say, and I've tested this out on a similar live stream where maybe I put in a few books, a few books that are several years old, so I know they're in the data set. And then I'll ask ChatGPT to compare and contrast some of the main ideas from four hour work week, essentialism, and the dip, right? So three books that would be in the data set, and then we'll get some information. It's not horrible, and we could actually do that example in a few minutes here. It's not horrible, but it's not necessarily uh, like new groundbreaking information. It's still regurgitated from other sources. So when you throw in podcast or something that's sort of real time, it's really hard to get anything really unique. So with that said, we are going to look at things that you can use ChatGPT or Bard for. And I found Bard to be pretty effective as well. And there's a direct tie into, you know, just Googling whatever you've typed in there. So you can hop out of the AI chatbot and get quickly over to basically, uh, well, it's just Google. So we could take a look at that too. And we have Daniel on. William tells me you could hear me. Fantastic. And we'll start getting into it here. And one of the things I want to point out is I do have an AI cheat sheet, which 
I think probably the folks that are on right now, you have you have seen this before, but the AI cheat sheet is a Google Doc. And I, I made it a Google Doc, not a PDF, because I wanted to be able to update it and change it over time. So it is actually not one sheet, it's five. But you can see it's pretty straight to the point. It gives you a template that's in the black writing here. And then the blue is what you could copy and paste in there. And it gives you, um, or sorry, <clears throat> it's very clear once you see it, but there are some the, some areas where you could just put in the format and the template, and then you could just paste it right in. The blue here is actually like specific examples. So I show you what the template is, and then I show you an ex specific example so you can get an idea. Further, and I think I'll go ahead and hit it, you know, up front here. So two of the most powerful prompts. Number one is the reverse engineering. So we'll show you an example here in a second, but the main idea here is when you're using the chatbot, ChatGPT, you often don't know exactly what you um, need to put in. You don't know the input. You don't know the prompts to use, right? Once you start getting the output, you see how ChatGPT has interpreted your input. You then can ask for follow-ups to get it to be exactly what you want it to be. Sometimes that may take five or six exchanges and you go back and forth and you slowly tweak it. That's one of the things that a lot of people that don't see the power in AI, they usually just try something once and they're like, that didn't work. This is not very useful and I'm gonna go do something else. But like most things, you have to try something. It's not quite right. It's kind of a failure at the first. And then you continue to iterate on it. And then you end up with something that's pretty useful. So once you have the little back and forth and you have tweaked the input to get the output that you want, you can just ask ChatGPT to give you a prompt that would elicit that response. And then you get a concise piece of, well, I guess it's a concise prompt. And that's not always perfect either. So I have seen this where I've asked for a prompt to use and it would leave out a part that I thought, thought was a little bit important. So I would just say, hey, ChatGPT, can you put this piece in there and make that part of the prompt? So it'll add like one line. So you end up with something pretty good. And again, you just have to have the mindset of like, Ha having an iterative approach. We also have David on here. What's up, David? Good to see you. And so that is number one, reverse engineering. You have the back and forth, and then you ask ChatGPT, what prompt should I use to get this response in the future? I want to be able to reuse it. And this is, you know, basically what you could do. So you see the little exchange that you might have. And then this one is the other. So this might be the most powerful one. We're hitting it early, but we'll come back to it. So you create your own prompts. And this is where, and I'll show you my chat GPT setup in a second, but essentially you end up with a prompt generator so that you can spawn up a chat bot that will do what you want it to do. So generally, you know, ChatGPT can do all sorts of different things, right? It has all this information and it can be anything that you want it to be. However, it remembers the chat history. So if you are chatting and you're using ChatGPT for like everything under the sun, it might confuse the context or the framing of whatever it is that you're asking. So it's really nice to just use a chatbot for a specific thing. And that's what I've done. So quickly, I'll, I'll show you. And you'll see over here that I have an SEO expert. I think I used that for um, from last week in the live stream. I have a FIRE, that's Financial Independence Retire Early content strategist. And then I have a niche site project content strategist. Both of those are based on GPT-4. So you can see I put in what it is. I put whether it's 
GPT-4 or 3.5. So here's an email copywriter. So that's 3.5. I don't need it to do anything too complicated. I want it to be fast. And using, yeah, a lot of these are just little examples that I've done. So about page essentials. And basically I train, so here's the fire content strategist. So I train the chatbot to be an expert in the financial independence retire early movement. So this is the full prompt that I used right here, right? So there's this whole, I, I'm sh not sure, but if I had to guess this, maybe like 400 words. And I also said, hey, can you be funny and sarcastic too? Because I wanted it to have a sense of humor. So I didn't create this, but I used a prompt generator. So that's what this whole chatbot does. This does prompt generation. And you can get the prompt generator right here. So you can go sign up. This is a free resource. You follow the link in the description and it's a prompt engineering cheat sheet. So you can get it right here. You just put in your email and then you actually get access to this cheat sheet and you get access to a, an AI repository. So that said, you train it with this prompt right here, you could actually chain the, change this up if you have found a good prompt, uh, not generator, but a prompt repository where they just have like lists of prompts, which if you just Google, you'll find tons of them out there. But basically you can put this in and then you can give further examples, which is exactly what I did. So I used this as the initial prompt for the prompt generator. And basically, you can input this, and then after that, you can just put in a title. So here's the quick example. So once you put in the main prompt, then you could just put in title, YouTube title writer, or it could be like YouTube content strategist for a specific channel. And then the more detailed you make it, the longer it will be. So you have this prompt that will help do YouTube titles. For me, in the, the fire situation here, you could see the the prompt is actually pretty long because I put in a few details. I added some details about the fire movement. And then I added this part here about basically having humor. So once you have the prompt generator, then you could pop in here and put in whatever you want. So for examples, like I do in these live streams, like I said last week, I'm pretty sure I did this SEO expert. So I just typed in title SEO expert. I got this prompt and then I had a chat bot that's an SEO expert. So I could hop over here, which this is trained from last week, but I could just say, um, what can I do to get backlinks to improve my rankings? And then we'll see what it comes up with here. So it'll probably tell me a handful of things that I could do. We have travel the Greek way, big uh, a lot of a lot of Greece coming at at us today. So and then Jonathan as well. What's up, Jonathan? Okay, so we have seven ways to get more backlinks, create quality content, guest posting, broken link building, participate in online communities, collaborate with other websites provide testimonials, create infographics. So there's seven ways right there. And the thing is you could ask for more. So I'll just say, give me five more. And it'll probably give five more pretty reasonable ones. Although I think we just, it's repeating some. So guest blogging, infographics, broken link building. So we already did those, but these two are new. And basically you end up with an expert in whatever you're, whatever you need help with, right? So if you want to, here's one that I've seen. If you want to have like a mock interview for a job, you can put that in here. You, it could be like a career strategy expert that could help you do practice interviews. Or it could be, if you're going to be on, you know, the, the news, you're going to be on TV and it can give you tips on practicing that. So the prompt generator is pretty powerful. So let's let's give it a shot here. Like I said, this is already trained up. And the cool thing, since I kind of know, you know, 
the ones that I use often, I, I can just hop over here to the prompt generator and we'll say, we'll call it a career strategy expert that can do mock interviews. We'll say mock job interviews. And often it'll give you a few tips right off the bat. So we'll get this prompt. So we have the prompt here. And then we'll create a new chat. We'll stay with 3.5 just for the speed and we're not doing anything so complicated here. So you just put in the prompt and then it's off to the races. So it tells you it's a career strategy expert and it helps you prepare for interviews with mock interviews and provide feedback. So it says to start and it goes on and on during the mock interview and I'll assist individuals in identifying career goals and plans to achieve involve understanding strengths interest and value. So actually let's, let's dive in. So let's say you need advice. So this is something that I haven't personally done, but some folks are using chat GPT as like a coach, as someone to guide them in various things. So I'll say, I just, I need help in this area and I'll just, so copy and paste it back in there, but basically the career goals and developing a plan. So it's probably going to ask me some stuff. So I'll just say, feel free to ask questions. And this is a time where it would probably be really useful to have just a voice typing situation uh, so that you don't have to type everything in there and you can just kind of talk and treat it like a job interview for real. So, here they're asking five questions of which many of them will would be you know potentially pages of answers so what are your what are your interests and what have you what do you enjoy doing in your free time what are your values and what's important in a job or career what skills and strengths do you possess and how can you use those skills in a job or a career what are job titles or industries that you find appealing what kind of work environment do you thrive in and what kind of company culture aligns with your values? And then it'll get a better understanding. Okay. So I'm not going to answer all those things because that would take a little while. But what I will do is I'll say, hey, can you give me, you know, 10 interview questions that I can practice with right now? All right, so it'll give me 10 questions. So tell me about yourself. Why are you interested in the position? What relevant experience do you have? What are your biggest strengths and how did they make you a good fit? Tell me about a time when you faced a challenge at work and how did you handle it? What are your long-term career goals? Give me an example of how you demonstrated leadership in the past. How do you handle tight deadlines for multiple projects? Describe a situation where you had to work with a difficult colleague or manager, and how did you handle it? What do you know about our company, and why do you want to work here? So let's say you don't have any good ideas for a certain uh, answer, or you don't have a good example. So I'm going to say a couple things. So what's a good answer for this? And then I'll put in the question and then I'll say, um, if I don't have an example, how should I answer? So we'll see what it comes up with. As I mentioned before, I think just having content written by these tools is maybe one of the most boring things that you can do with it. I... I think you can do that. And I'm going to show you something uh, in a minute with originality.ai, which is a 
plagiarism checker and it's an AI detector. And then content at scale is a free AI detector. So we'll take a look at those. And I published a video yesterday. I'll skip some of the details, but check out the video. Basically, I go to YouTube, I snag a transcript from a good video, and then I ask ChatGPT to rewrite it into a blog post. That's the summary, right? Pretty st straightforward, pretty simple. The data is out there. You could take a few different transcripts, compile it into one, have ChatGPT or Bard rewrite it for you. Boom, you got a blog post. Is that a smart thing to do? I don't know. I wouldn't really advise you to do that, but it's something that you can do. The basics are pretty straightforward. So the thing is, let's see what we have here. So if you don't have an example of working with a difficult, difficult colleague or manager, you can answer by discussing how you would handle it if it were to arise in the future. Here's an example of how you can answer the question. So they actually gave us a really good sample. So the, the, the thing is, if you were, if you were doing some written correspondence as part of the screening process, you probably could come up with a really, really good response that would be okay. Now, the thing is, I'm pretty sure if I take this and I go over to Originality AI, which let's do a new scan. So I'm an affiliate for Originality. It's rather inexpensive, but if you hire writers, I suggest it's potentially a good thing to, to use. So this is... Just a quick scan. This is only 113 words. Oh, and I didn't mean to check for plagiarism here. So the thing is, I check for plagiarism. We're, we're good to go here. Yeah, so not plagiarize. Um, but the AI detection, it says it's 100% AI. So let's read it out and see if it sounds weird. I'll, I'll hop back over. So I have been fortunate to work with a with many great colleagues and managers throughout my career, and I have not had a situation where I had to work with a difficult colleague or manager. However, if such a situation were to arise, I would first try to understand the root cause of the issue and then communicate openly and respectfully with the colleague or manager to resolve the problem. I would then, I'm throwing in words here, I would listen carefully to their concerns and try to find common ground to resolve the issue. If necessary, I would seek the guidance of a supervisor or HR rep to help mediate the situation and find a resolution that is fair to all parties. So I don't think I would say that sounds like AI. I think it just sounds clear and concise. So the thing is, Google has said that they are okay with AI content, right? So they changed gears on that. I think in the past, I think they referred to sort of like automated content. They always talk about spammy content, but more recently they've talked about how they're okay with content as long as it is, is it's high quality. So if it's high quality, basically if it helps the visitor, they're okay with it. So what does that mean for tools like originality? I don't know. People still really care. And I think um, people still ask me, uh, it seems to be every day, what about this tool or what about that tool? It doesn't pass originality AI or they're using. So here's another thing. So I, I published the video yesterday and someone said, hey, Doug, why why are you even using originality? If Google says that they're okay with AI and Doug, in the video, you said Google doesn't care about AI, then why are we using originality? Or the content at scale detector, which we could take a look at too. And the thing is, it's because people still ask all the time. So they ask me every day. And I think if you're hiring a writer and you're expecting them to write it from scratch and not use an AI tool, then maybe it's worthwhile to use them. However, they're, uh, they're not 100% accurate. So I, <laughs> a number of times I've put in my own content 
and there's a you know pretty significant amount of you know chance that it was written by AI. It wasn't. I just I wrote it. So I think if it reads okay, it's probably all right. So let's pop back over. Now we're at content at scale. This is a free AI detector. I am an affiliate over at content at scale. They have, it's an AI uh, tool that generates content, but they do have a free detector over here, which I just pasted in the same thing. So we'll check for AI content. And so this one says it is highly likely to be AI. So how robotic is the content? 13%. So I don't, I wouldn't say that's highly likely to be AI. So 13% and originality being a paid tool. I think they, it's a little more sophisticated. Um, so this one says hundred percent. And I'm actually curious people in the comments or people in the chat, let me know what you think. Do you, do you use AI tools and then do you check with originality or other tools? By the way, there's a link over to originality and the content at scale AI detector. So let's um, let's shift gears just a little bit here. So I showed you this prompt generator, which was pretty effective. So we have this prompt, and what you could do, you could actually take this prompt and hop over to Bard and put that in, and then Bard will essentially do the same thing. Now, I'm not sure if you can put in uh, as a, like make Bard a prompt generator. So same deal. The thing with Bard, it's, it's actually pretty darn quick too. And you get other drafts. For this, it doesn't matter as much, um, but here we end up with something pretty good. I'll give, it a, I'll give it a thumbs up. Now I'm curious, I'm gonna reset the chat here because I don't, I don't care about the job interview stuff too much. I'm gonna go to the prompt generator. Actually, I'll just use the, the prompt generator here. So I'm just going to put this in to Bard and see if it could be a prompt generator. To my knowledge, I don't think you can go back to existing prompts in Bard. I think it kind of, it resets. You may be able to go back. We'll check in a second. So, it's given me an example here. So now I'm gonna put in, just like before, I'll put in the, the title for career strategist and see if Bard interprets this correctly. So it should give me a prompt to use. Okay. So we end up with it says I am a career strategist expert da, 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 da. so I'm gonna say give me a prompt to use What did I call this? A career strategy expert. So it looks like Bard sort of misinterpreted it and it, it changed this current chatbot into the career strategy expert. Okay, so this seems like it's okay. So I wanna create a chatbot that helps people with their careers. It should be able to do the following, and it gave five things. And it should be able to access information, one, two, three, four, five, which I don't think, some of this, like online job boards, I'm not sure if that would work. But anyway, it's trying, and I think ChatGPT, the prompt generator works a little bit better and then you could create the prompts in ChatGPT and then move it over to Bard if that's your preferred. So we have Bard activity prompts, the responses, okay. Okay, so we have the various, so we have the history but it's, it doesn't, I don't know if you can go back to it.
hard to tell. So anyway, but Bard has been pretty good overall, just using it here and there. Okay, so a couple other things we can go over. We have those, you know, few prompts that are pretty good. Let's say, you know, I, I opened this with talking about improving your, uh, or using ChatGPT for content in general and just writing content. So I do encourage you to write your own content. If you use the tools, maybe you just end up using it for research. And I think that is pretty valid. So let's say I'm gonna make this sort of a multi-purpose. So we have this career strategist so I'm going to ask for a blog, an outline for a blog post here. So an outline for a blog post about asking for a raise. And I'll say a detailed outline. Usually that gives you a little bit more. So it very quickly spits out an outline with seven sections, which is great. There's a lot of detail in here. So you could actually save yourself. I mean, even if you knew what you wanted to cover, you could save a lot of time by getting an outline and then adding whatever you needed in here. You can also get help. This is sort of an SEO thing or, you know, you could cover the same thing in a YouTube video, but you, you can get uh, some suggestions for a title. So give te 10 um, titles for the posts that are catchy and clickable. So again, even if you're very good at writing titles, maybe you come up with three on your own and then you could ask for 10 and then you'll have these great examples here. So even if you don't use it for writing, you can get a big help. You can save a lot of time, save some brain power, these, you know, whatever uh, 10 there are here, you may not find one that you want to use exactly, but usually they have like the first part and the second part, and you can mix and match from there. So maybe the salary negoti negotiation playbook, and then maybe it's get the salary you deserve, right? So you can mix them, mix them up. You can, of course, from here, you can go deeper and ask chat GPT to actually write the content for you. But that's, like I said, that's usually the most boring thing that you could do. So let's hop over here from our sponsor, Otis Global, kickstart your website with domains that aged well. So basically these are aged domains. These are domains that have a bunch of backlinks pointing to them. And if you follow the link in the description, you can Get $100 in your account by following my affiliate link. It doesn't cost anything to join or anything like that. They just, they they like to keep it sort of locked down so you, you can't browse until you join up. So one great thing is the filtering mechanism over here. So I typically have it set up on the English language. I usually don't filter on the top level domains, but normally I would just go for a .com or .org, .net, kind of the, the standards. And for today, we have sports filtered, but you know you can uncheck that and then you can see all the other ones listed here. And you could check out, I mean, let's say you have a strong interest in outdoors and recreation. So maybe you click that one. Maybe you have a site in that area already and you're like, okay, maybe I'll see if there's anything that I can 301 redirect to my site. And when you start checking it out, so we have like Cycle Greater Yellowstone. That's cool. So I used to live in Bozeman, Montana, which is just outside the Yellowstone area there. So this is kind of cool. I'm curious what happened with this site. So they always come with a logo here. So 
This one's pretty straightforward. This one, usually there's a little, um, you know, more of a logo. This is just the, the text, but this looks fine here. And you could take a look over on the Wayback Machine, see what was going on. So it looks kind of cool. It looks like a touring group here. That must be Yellowstone Lake, which is one of my favorite areas of the park there. So as you scroll down, you can get a lot more information here, especially, you know, the big thing is where the links are coming from. So there's there's Oregon Live, Vogue.com, Chicago Tribune, Straight Dope, Lifetime.life, Spokesman.com, adventurecycling.org and so on. So there's a bunch of them. Oh, there's outside Bozeman. I think I know that site. Yellowstonepark.com and a bunch of others. So you can get more detail like about the age. So this was started back in 2012 and then it has quite a few backlinks. I think it listed it up at the top. So 87 referring domains. And this is just a quick example. So if you had a cycling website, Maybe this one is perfect if you wanted to focus, especially in the Yellowstone region. There's a lot of uh, mountain biking. There's a lot of other uh, touring, uh, bike touring as well out there. So if you're not interested in that domain, you can hop over to the whole filtering mechanism over here and then find something that you are interested in. So there's hundreds, I'm not sure if there's over a thousand, but there, there's at least hundreds of domains and whatever niche you're into, you just filter directly on that and see what's close. Or you could put in you know, a specific term if you wanted to. So thanks a lot to Otis Global. Do check it out. I have uh, features over there where I highlight specific domains. So if you want to check those out. I think you do have to be a, I think you have to have an account, but I think there was one, I saw it earlier. Oh, here, like Team Origin recommended by Doug. So you can check out the ones that I have recommended. All right, so let's pop back and I see a couple questions came in here. So let's check that out. So Bahat says, can I use the same heading just changing the keyword in them for similar articles like best collars for dogs and best collars for cats. So you said, can I use the same heading and just change the keyword for similar articles? Yeah, I think so. I don't think there's an issue with that. They, they would target the, the right keyword and that's all right. Okay, and Yorkie Universe says, Originality AI has told me my articles were 100% AI and plagiarized when I wrote them myself, so I don't quite trust it. So one thing, um, if you checked for plagiarism, it may have found your site, and then it would say, hey, the site already published it, and it, it was your site. So sometimes you, know, you, have to, you have to take that into account. Um, as far as the, you know, the AI, like in the, the detection, I think it might be to the point where it's not relevant. Very quickly, it went to, it's not really that relevant. And I, I'm actually curious for the people, I think I asked earlier, but I didn't see anyone reply. But if you do check for AI detection, why are you doing that? So if anyone is writing content using AI, why are you checking it? Do you just want to make sure? And the thing is, honestly, right, if, if ChatGPT and the AI writers are working properly, they would write it as human, as, as humanly possible, right? And like I said, when I read back the text a couple times I was like that just that sounds clean it sounds kind of formal but that is okay like if you're doing if you're doing technic technical or business writing you want it to be clean concise you're not using contractions right there's different styles of writing so I'm not really sure if if the tools are mimicking really closely I mean it's predictive uh like content generation right so essentially it should 
sound a lot like humans. And now that we've reached a point where it's not repeating itself, it's not making, uh, you know, the mistakes like, you know, a tool like Jasper, um, at least from a couple of years ago, just really wasn't doing a good job. And when you read it, it looked like AI, like it looked shitty. It didn't read well. So now if this content reads pretty well, it's clear, it's in the right order, it makes sense. So if I looked at it and I, I looked at that and then I looked at something that was uh, deemed as not AI at all, but it was a little shittier, like you go for the better one, right? So the point, as far as, uh, you know, Yorkie Universe mentioned, the plagiarism, I'm not sure it may have found your site. If it, if it detected it as 100% AI, that is weird. It means you, you write like a robot. <laughs> I mean, I pulled a transcript of one of my own videos and it was like 63% AI um, or a chance of AI. It's like the weather. <laughs> it's like the weather. They're wrong most of the time, but they try their best. All right. Mr. Hacker. Sure, you got it. Thanks for tuning in. So any any questions out there? Any prompts that you all are using that you find really helpful? And one thing I can do, which uh, I I haven't I haven't done any videos on Mid Journey, but I sent out an email last week and I got quite a few replies back. So I think I probably can share some stuff that I'm doing with MidJourney. So here was the premise of my little experiment here. So I'm going to try to share. Okay. So one, one little thing with MidJourney is that it works on Discord. I don't know why they did that. I'm probably going to do some video on it before too long. And I don't know. It seems like they didn't need to do that. But these are all AI generated images. I sent some of these out in my email last week. So in the the pictures of the the ladies playing guitars here, those are all AI generated. And yeah, these guitars, AI generated as well. So pretty pretty cool stuff. And like other, you know, prompt engineering ideas, like you can just learn how to do the prompts and it does a pretty good job. So we'll start with this. And if you haven't used it before, you just do you do slash imagine. And I'm just gonna copy and paste the prompt from before but I'm going to change it up a bit. So a close-up shot of, we'll say an electric guitar on a white background. And I'm gonna say Les Paul, which is a specific style. So I'm gonna see if they can do it. And we'll say Sunburst. High resolution, studio lighting. We don't need the modern and sleek. I'm going to take out a lot of it here. Like many things, simplicity often works pretty well. And then when you go find prompts, sometimes there's just a bunch of shit in there that you don't really need. So this will take a minute or two. I can't remember if on the if I'm on relaxed mode or fast. So I do pay for this as well. I think there's a little bit of a free version you can use, but you can get a couple things running in parallel. So this is working here. You could actually get this to run a couple times. And when so I'm going to do nearly the same I'm going to do nearly the same prompt here. However, I'm not going to say close up. So I want it to be not a close up. And it, it nailed the Les Paul portion. And 
that is a sunburst finish. So it takes a little while and it kind of, it shows you as it goes here. Has anyone played with mid journey yet? I know in the, in the chat, there's a couple people in there that may have dabbled a little bit. So it's not quite done and it just completed here. So we have, you know, there's a nice flame maple top. So a couple funny things, right? Anyone see some issues here? So number one, the guitars look good, all right? The guitars look pretty good. So this one here in the top left has three, three knobs. There should be four, all right? There should be four knobs. Um, the, you know, the top two, they have the three knobs. There's a switch on the top, that's correct. Um, the one on the bottom left, the, there's four knobs. The switch looks good. Beautiful flame maple top. There's a pick guard where it's supposed to be. This knob right here is in the wrong spot. So it should be a little, there's, it's just like a little bit off. And then this one here on the bottom right, we have four knobs. Those look relatively in the right spot. But then there's three additional knobs right where your arm would be. So it does mess up occasionally. Now, I did uh, another, I just, I kind of re-ran this one and then I, I didn't say close up because I wanted to see a little bit more of the guitar. So in this case, I love all the, the extra knobs on here. This is hilarious. Okay. So this one has five knobs here. This one has three and three. <laughs> this one has six. So this one has four, but they're still kind of in the wrong spot. So it didn't, it didn't nail it, but they're all sunburst. They all look pretty nice and generally they look pretty good. So what you can do, you can like get variations on like the one that you liked. So this one is number three. So you can like change it up a little bit. So I'm going to see, I'll just, I'm going to take out, I'm going to put cherry burst which ends up being a little more red and I'm going to take out, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave it like that. Or if you like a specific one, so let's say I really like the one with all the extra knobs for some reason. So you could just click upscale. So upscale four, and then it will give you that one just like all by itself. And you can go open this in the, in the browser and it's like a higher resolution and stuff. But it's pretty funny. I mean, you could post these out here and like, hey, I got this guitar. Like it was a manufacturing defect and then, you know, have people tease you in the various forums of the world out there. So in this case, yeah, so I re-ran re -ran it based on the one that looked um, pretty good and I changed it from sunburst to cherry burst. So it should be a little more red which it is. Um, th this one even has more red than the others, but you can like riff on the same, the same variation. So let's try, we'll try this one. And instead of a white background, we'll put black background and see what happens. So I haven't played with these variations as much, but if you, if you do that, you can change up the text. I'm not sure how much you can change it from the original. So I'm like doing a variation of the one before and I went instead of a white background, I went to black and I have a feeling it may not work that well. So like all of these AI tools, like once you figure something out, you can like do it again and again. But in this case, I think I would be able to put it on a black background, but I may have to go back to the original, do some tweaking and like change it from the original. So the cool part and the thing that kind of makes sense for using a chatbot is you can come over here and say ask and then you could put in a question. So, and I don't know enough of the vocabulary to figure it out, but there's a seed that is used for each um, image here. So you you can use the same seed for the specific image that you liked and then go from there. But I can't remember 
how to do it. I feel like I feel like you click on the little mailbox thing. But anyway, it's not it's not fun for me to try to figure out how to do it here. So Midjourney is super cool. So you can do product photography for your website. So I'll do another quick example. And you can keep it like super simple. And you could say, let's see, what's a what's a good uh we'll say reading glasses. We'll just say product photography is a style. And we'll say white background. And in the meantime, and for another one, I won't say white background, we'll say like splashing in water. And I'll put like neon lights. So one thing that you may run into an issue with is like, these won't be exactly what the, the product is, but you might be able to get pretty close for certain things. And depending on what the, what the image is, it may not matter that much. And the quick example is like, if you have glasses um, and you say, hey, I want the glasses to be on a person, right? So we have the product photo, but then you could say, hey, I want this to be on a person. So yeah, we have like some product photos here. They generally look pretty good. And yeah, there's like reflections or shadows and all that kind of stuff. Here, the one uh, splashing in water, that'll work in a second here. Oh, and Volker says, the remixes never work for me. It's mostly better to start from scratch with a new prompt. And Volker, yeah. So I think spot on. I, I always try it and at best, it'll make a minor change. So good data point. The one thing that I've seen is you could find out what seed was used and then use the same seed and potentially end up with something very close, but with the specs that you want. So Jonathan says, please show how you load an original photo to do reverse engineering or variations. Okay, cool. So Jonathan, I could do that. And quickly, let's take a look at the glasses splashing in water with neon lights. Right, so pretty good for just like me randomly throwing in a prompt. Some of the, like, <laughs> some of them looks like they really threw them in the water pretty well there. So let me, uh, give me one second here. I need to make sure I got an image to use. And there's a couple ways to do it. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. So... There's a there's a way that you can reverse engineer and it's called describe, right? So drag and drop or click an image and then it will tell me what prompt could be used to get that image. So let me let me see if I can find something a little more interesting that I haven't done before because I did this in <laughs> I did this for my email the other week. Hold on one second. Okay. So here is an image. It's a it's a couple cups of espresso or coffee. I think they were espresso. All right. So I'll put that in. Mid journey is thinking. When you put that in, you you upload an image. I just drag and dropped it in, Jonathan, by the way. It'll give you four options. And some of them are more detailed. So this one, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So two cups of coffee, coffee are sitting on a counter in the style of delicate markings, shiny eyes, 
light black and indigo swirling vortexes, highly polished surfaces, flicker effect, marble, and then aspect ratio of three to four. Some are simpler, like the third one here. Two cups are placed on a counter with coffee in the style of dark tonalities, caffeinol developing. And you can just like click on the numbers below for which one you want to run. So we could do the first one. And I'll just, I'll send it in. Actually, let's do, let's do the first three. And, and see. So yeah, I mean, you could just put in the, you could just upload the image and then that's all you have to do. The other way you can do it is you can find a URL of an image and then, or use a new URL of an image and then you can blend it with something else, which is a little bit different, but kind of cool. So I'll, I'll show you that too. What we'll do, we'll hop over. I'm not sharing my the, my, um, the, Im, the image that I'm looking at just yet, but I will show you in a second. Okay, so what you also can do, so you could do imagine and then you can put in the URL and then I can't, I think you could just put in, I think it combines it with whatever, whatever you want. So this is an image, which I think it'll show you in a second. And I'm trying to think what else, um, I'll put, um, All right, so we'll see what we come up with there. Okay, so I put in the three, and here's the first image, right? So these are it's a little bit fancier. It has put swirls on the on the cups. It's using black marble here instead of white and white saucers. So here's another one. Everything is quite marbleized. <laughs> And here's the third. So this one's a little dark and kind of a little different. There's actually more coffee cups on this one too. So you could see it kind of it kind of gets the style. These images actually look cooler than the one that I took here. <laughs> but what you could do is use these as a starting point. And the part that it screwed up on, maybe you copy and paste this. But then you you change up and you say uh, like a white countertop. There's a, some notes here for light black and indigo, and it put it applied that color everywhere. But you should just apply that color to certain pieces, like the like the actual coffee. So if we scroll down, so the original image is right here, it's from my website. And let me, uh, I'm gonna have to share it here. And then I think, so here's the original image, that's our old dog, Brody. We're at Grand Teton National Park. So this is the original image here. And I knew that it was like going to be a mountain type scene, so it does weird stuff, all right? So <laughs> there's mountains in the background. So good on that. I put to have a wolf <laughs> and I put to have bison. And what it's done, it's like combined me and my wife into one person. And then there's a bison here <laughs> in the first one. Um, yeah, so there's a bison, two bison and in the top left, in the top right, it looks like a bison, but kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like a dog. This one, it's like a dog bison combo or like a wolf bison combo. And then there's no wolf here in this one. But like I said, it has combined my wife and I into a single person, which looks creepy. So it does, it does, do some weird things. 
However, this all this stuff is photorealistic, which is like boggling. What you can do, so I'll show you something else. Um, I'm gonna get this simple, the simpler one right here. And two cups of coffee are placed on a counter. Two cups are placed with coffee. So we'll say two white cups in the style of dark tonality. So I'm gonna take out the dark tonalities. And I'm gonna say, so I'll make it black and white. Um, like a line, line drawing. Minimalistic. And then we'll wrap it up, wrap it up here. So like I was saying, you know, playing with uh, Mid Journey has been pretty fun. And from my perspective, I think if you were, if you were creative and you put in the time, you could come up with some pretty cool art that is, you know, more original. So one thing that people run into, and there's some copyright issues, but like you can say, in the style of a certain person and it will very closely rip off their art. I mean, you could put in your own details, but essentially you're like creating art in the style of a person. Again, it's kind of, it's like photo realistic. It's very, very good. But just like chat GPT, I think you could use the tools without infringing on someone's art or copying them to an extent where you're like, this is just copying someone. So here we end up with a couple like great examples, right? So you got the white, white mugs, it's minimalistic, it's line art, it is black and white, it's exactly what I asked for. And just like I was mentioning with ChatGPT earlier, like you could just find something that kind of works and tweak it and tweak it. If you have like one of the higher level paid versions of mid journey, you can have it run things like over and over again. It uses up your credits, but it, I mean, the credits don't really cost all that much. And the thing is you could run it several times to get, let's say I wanted to get eight different, um, four panels like this to get 32 options and then find the one out of 32 that I think looks pretty good. And then I can iterate upon that one. So the other thing that you can do is let's say, uh, basically you can create permutations. So you could put in a couple uh, sort of nested prompts and it'll run several things in a row. So you, you could kind of set it off to create several things, kind of like a rough draft, and then refine it from there. But like I said, you can do just simple art like this. One thing I'm curious, like, so I put black and white. I wonder if I could put like black and red, just like some other color with virtually the same. Or how about, um, we'll say navy. No, we'll just say blue. Blue and white line drawing. So we should end up with a similar type set uh, just with blue instead of black. And I didn't specify like what color blue or anything. So, all right. So after this, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Don't forget, you can get the free cheat sheet. You just go and sign up. Jonathan says, I've been using Lexica as well as MidJourney. Lexica is very, very good too. It has more user-friendly interface and higher res image when upscaled. Cool, I'm not familiar with that one. It's crazy how many tools are out there now. So Lexica. Yeah, and the thing with MidJourney, like I said, it's on Discord and a couple of people were like, yeah, I don't even want to try it. I don't know why it's on Discord. Um, and then eventually I hopped on. 
And I wonder, um, so I'll check out Lexica too. So this one didn't do exactly what I expected. There's blue here, but it's not exactly the same. All right, and Volker says, using ChatGPT to create prompts for mid-journey also works perfectly if you tell it what you need and provide a sample prompt that provides great results. Cool, I have, I've, I did actually create a, a prompt for mid-journey in ChatGPT and it ended up, I, I only used it a tiny amount. I think it ended up being like a lot more verbose and it didn't provide like more like better results but i didn't to be fair i didn't use it quite enough so here's the one with um where i know blue but the thing is if you wanted to right here's a little ex example let's say you wanted to create a like a comic and you were going to publish on like instagram you could easily like you not have to worry about the art part if you're not an, an artist who's going to create all the images and draw it out. You could just do it like this and then put your, you know, slap a couple of captions on here or whatever you need to do for your, your comic and you're good to go. So pretty powerful. All right. And Jonathan says that uh, Lexica does like 3000 by 2000 pixels. Yeah. And mid journey is, I think it's only like, it's like a thousand or 1500 square something like that all right cool thanks everybody for hopping on and we'll catch you next week everybody have a good rest of the week